Welcome to our posts. Today we will see stories of r slash true off my chest. My parents told me that my sister thinks I'm a creep towards her child and I feel absolutely gutted. One of my parents slipped to me that my sister has been talking to them and some other people that she thinks I'm being inappropriate with her kindergarten age son. So much so that apparently she's been telling people that under no circumstances should I be left alone with her kids. For a bit of context, my sister lives in another country and we rarely see each other. My parents are struggling financially, so they haven't been able to visit their grandkids often. So I've tried to make an effort to spend time with my sister and her family so they could have a connection with my sister's side of the family. I see them around once a year. She has a son and a daughter, who both seem to like me, but maybe because I am a man, her son seems to like me a lot. He always wants to play sports etc with me. I thought he felt secure around me as he would often hug me and want to sit in my lap. I myself didn't initiate any physical touch outside of maybe putting my arm on his shoulder or picking him up from under his arms. Nothing below shoulder and arm level. Today, one of my parents slips that she has been discussing with them that she's concerned with how I act with her son, and she wants them to constantly keep an eye on me when they visit, so that I wouldn't be alone with her kids. Apparently she has discussed this with other people in our circle too. Apparently she was also asking my parents if I might be gay. I am not, and even if I was I have no idea what does that have anything to do with her children. The worst part about this to me is that she is a strong person, so if this was a matter of maybe just overstepping boundaries, I think she would have no problem telling me that. The fact that she's saying this to people behind my back makes me think that she thinks I am a predator. This situation makes me feel awful, I am ashamed and upset that someone would even think that about me, let alone a family member. As soon as I found out I sent her a long message how awful and disgusting it feels that she would think that of me. I also stated that I understand that if she is being cautious as a parent, but that we shouldn't be in any contact with each other anymore. After thinking about the whole situation for a couple of hours I remembered that when I was a teenager, she saw a news article about some young man who stabbed a woman to death and she went crying to our parents saying that she's afraid that's what I'll turn into. I was just a shy and awkward teenager. We generally got along okay, so I don't understand why she would think that lowly of me. E, to add some context, I am a completely average person who has a steady job, I have many male and female friends and I've had long-term relationships with women. As far as I am concerned, I don't have any characteristics that would make come off as a loner or somehow creepy. Edit 2 got a response. She apologized about things went down, and that she meant to bring it up with me. Apparently the issue was that she felt that things like kids sitting in my lap were okay for a 2-3 to three year old, but not when they're 5-6 to six which made her uncomfortable. This is completely understandable to me, but a lot of trouble could have been saved by communicating this to me personally. She said it was nothing personal and hopes I can understand her one day, but with the gay comments and all, it's kinda hard not to see it that way. I am a bit relieved there are no serious accusations being thrown around, but I still don't think this is a mendable relationship, so I'll be staying out her life. Thank you for all the supportive messages. Top comments. Your sister is weird AF and seems to have something against you. I would distance myself. OP replies. There was also a point in time where she didn't want our parents to see her kids because me and her had strong political disagreement with our parents, and she got into her head that they could harm their grandchildren because of these differences. Thank you for saying that distancing is the right idea. Weirdo uncle is a lazy stereotype. My own mother made these type of insinuations of me when my niece and nephew were small and I was unmarried at the time with no kids of my own. I live 800 miles away from them at the time and saw them maybe once a year when they were little. Haven't talked to my mom in 15 years now and I'm happily married and have a child of my own that she will never meet because she thought that way of me. I will never accept an apology from her, not that she ever has even made the attempt. She told my sister that just was mostly joking when she said. 100% unfunny. Damn, reminds me of something that happened to me in high school about 15 years ago. Often we would go to my mate's girlfriend's house as it was close to the school, so it kind of became the default hangout spot for our friend group, they had three daughters two of which were in high school one of which was much younger, we would all go around there and everyone would just ignore the younger daughter obviously because she was just a kid, who cares about a kid right? 
but I always made an effort to make her feel included just little things like asking about her TV shows or talking about her dolls and stuff. One day I went there and everyone just seemed cold towards me I didn't quite understand what was happening until my mate told me that her parents have seen me getting close to the younger daughter and assumed I had nefarious intentions, this absolutely devastated me, it is not who I am at all and I would never inflict any kind of harm of that nature on anyone let alone a child. Safe to say I stopped going around there and I haven't let myself be nice to children since in case anyone got the wrong idea, it's not a nice feeling. Opie replies. I resonate with that feeling of not wanting to be nice around children because of an accusation. Could be that it's because this thing just happened, but I this has severely affected my desire to be around any children or have any of my own. Hopefully the feeling of not wanting kids because of this goes away with time. Next story. I am secretly happy my husband is throwing a toddler-like tantrum and has not been using our swimming pool for over a week. Sorry, this turned out longer than intended, but it felt good. For context, we've been married for over 30 years, ups and downs like most marriages. Some pretty horrific downs about 5 years ago, but trying to make it work with some significant boundaries in place. Live with two adult sons, housing prices suck here and we don't mind, and teen daughter. For most of our marriage we had an above-ground pool which I always cared for. Partly because of experience, partly because I am the one who used it the most. I can swim for hours at a time, the rest of the family not so much. For years ago we moved to a lower cost of living city, but much hotter, but our new home has a gorgeous pool with a large water feature and is quite shady, relevant. Husband retired early and I was still working so he did most of the pool care, with help from me when he had troubles. He would laugh and call me the pool whisperer because I always seem to know what to do and can get it cleared up quickly when it turns or has issues. But, he always tries to make a big deal about how much work it is. The truth is he likes to putter. Whenever he would get blow hard and whiny about it, I would offer to take over the responsibility, I have done it for over 30 years, I am happy to take it back over if it's too much for you. He would brush me off, but stop whining. Last summer, I retired early and I was so ready to finally enjoy the pool, but he likes the pool pretty cold, around 74, for context, competition water is 78 to 82, most commercial slash heated pools are kept around 84, and the Water Safety Commission recommends not swimming in under 77. We have solar cover panels, I purposely bought panels instead of one large so I could handle them myself and leave some on when I was just exercising in the shallow end, it was constant battle, I put them on, he would take them off, an argument over water temp. I battled in June, but frankly in July and August I gave up. It bothered the kids, who continually asked, Mom, you love the pool, why aren't you using it? Without making an issue of it, I would just say, just not in the mood. This year, I decided I just wasn't having it. In mid-May husband went to visit his parents and I used the opportunity to recruit my son to help me get the covers from the garage, where my husband passive-aggressively had stored them under stuff, in a hard-to-get-to-place, clean them, and put them on the pool. When husband came home he pitched a fit. It's too hot here for those, it makes the pool too hard to clean, you're not leaving them on. I calmly explained it was still very cool and raising the pool even a bit made a difference on if I would use the the pool, it wasn't harder to care for the pool, and I was happy to do it, I make the point I am the one who, by far, uses the pool the most, I talk about normal water temps, and finally, we could compromise on the temp and keep it around 78 to 80. He blustered, yelled and wouldn't acknowledge facts, we were going round and round. Finally he yelled, well it's not happening and every time you put them on, I am just going take them off. My son, C, had enough and came out of his room, no, you're not. Dad, I have tried to stay out of this, but you're being unreasonable. You're using straw men arguments and bullying mom. Mom has offered reasonable solutions and compromises. Husband threw his hands up and stomped off, fine, but when the water gets to 80, they come off. And I am taking them off when I swim. And I am taking them off when I use the vacuum. All things I suggested. The truth is, because it's such a large pool and so shaded and with the large fountain, which lowers the pool temp, it is pretty difficult to get the pool even up to 80, let alone sustain it there until very hot weather. He does a bunch of passive-aggressive stuff like, purposely running the vacuum in the hottest part of the day, 
and forgetting to put the covers back on, running the fountain overnight, etc. But, I just ignored it, put the covers on, fix the fountain timer, and get it up to a pretty consistent 76 to 78. I swim every day. At least 2 hours, some days up to 6 hours. I knew he would purposely try and let the pool get green to prove a point, but I watched it, then he accidentally ran out of chlorine. So, I took it over. After a few weeks, he came to me and admitted he liked puttering with it, and wanted to take it back over, fine. Two weeks ago daughter and I went on a girl's trip and sure enough when we get home it's down to 74. After we unpack, I go out and put the covers on. Husband pitches a fit and starts in with all the same arguments, but I calmly say, look we had an agreement and compromise, but you're the one that is trying to break it. A few hours go by and he takes the covers off and jumps in and swims for less than 10 minutes, which is usual for him, and leaves the covers off. I get in and am in the process of putting them back in when he comes back out, I just took them off and you're putting them back. Yes, it's only 74. I am going to be exercising in the shallow end, so I am putting them in the deep end. Well I left them off because I am going to back in. When? Now? He glances at my son's window because it's open and he is home, well, no. But later, I tell him, no worries I plan to be in for at least 2 to 3 hours, I find it super easy to roll them up from in the pool, I will take them off whenever you want to come in. He grumbles very low, you're making it not fun, I am just not going to swim anymore. And for the last week he hasn't stepped in the backyard, even though it's been in the high 90s here. I silently started taking over the care again. I have been swimming every day, 4 to 6 hours. None of the kids seem to be aware of the shift. Yesterday C came out for the first time in a while and husband was in the kitchen in hearing distance and observing. I had to hold my laughter back when C was nodding approvingly and said, wow. I think this is the clearest and cleanest I have ever seen it. He walked over to the thermometer, hauled it out and said, 79, I asked, are you going to come in, I will take the covers off, he said, don't bother, he was just going to cool off. When he got in and it was clear he was going to stay, I took them off and said, I have discovered it is really easy and takes less than 2 minutes to do from in the pool. C ended up swimming longer than I and I noticed when he got out, he put the covers back on for me. Tomorrow starts a 10 day heat wave, temps predicted from 99 to 111. Tonight husband was heavily whining and was upset that I wasn't upset. I shrugged and said, we can't change it, I am just grateful we have a pool and air conditioning. I left off, it's not my fault you're not using the pool. I am so interested to see if he keeps his protest up or if the over 100 temps break his resolve. Top comments. I feel like you've lived with this for so long you don't even realize how effed up this is. This reads like someone who hates you trying to ruin something you love, and you're so desensitized to it that you just laugh it off. This is an incredible amount of disrespect that he is giving you and that you are enduring. This is just bizarre. Am I understanding correctly that the only reason for him acting the way he is is that the pool is too warm? How does this man function in the world when actual problems come up, or legitimately difficult circumstances that he can't control? Your husband sounds insufferable. That your son felt the need to come to your defense and called your husband out for being a bully is pretty bad. It comes off that your husband doesn't actually like the pool that cold since he barely uses it, he only want to make it so unpleasant that you don't want to use it because it seems to be one of your favorite activities. Why do you accept his yelling, sabotaging one of your favorite activities and his passive-aggressive crap? Nice example to set for your teen daughter, would you accept a man treating her that way? Opie replies. You have a very valid point. And in truth it was worse before my daughter was born, but I did grow more of spine when it became clear what an example I was setting for her. Now we are both retired, the house is paid for, and the kids mostly grown. Before the move, we did almost divorce. Of course, he pleaded he had seen the error of his ways and vowed change. Part of the boundaries was, thankfully, separate bedrooms to see how things went, and that has been helpful to have my own space. What the future brings who knows. Next story. I sent my ex-GF to the ER and I regret it. A little background, I... 32M, hate cheaters. My father, 59M, was a serial cheater. 
But my mother, 57F, didn't leave because she was dependent on him. So, as soon as I was able, I took my mother and left his house. It has been 10 years since I have spoken to him. My ex, 29F, girlfriend of 2 years at that time, knew it. One night, I came back from work to find both my mother and girlfriend upset. But they wouldn't tell me, so I figured it was some woman thing. But that night, my girlfriend left the room, and I followed her to find them arguing. The story is my girlfriend was planning to meet with some guy, but my mother, I guess thanks to her experience with my father, knew something was up and followed her. She prevented my girlfriend from sleeping with that man and wanted to tell. Since nothing happened, she hoped I could forgive and try to repair the relation. But my girlfriend was against it hence their fight. When I understood the situation, I went in and told my girlfriend to leave the same night. Typical to cheater, she blamed me, then begged. But since my mind was already made up, she got mad, but not at me. At my mother and even tried to attack her. And this is where I was an a-hole. I started recording when I heard them arguing, so I had proof. I could claim I was protecting my mother, so I hit her face as hard as I could. We called an ambulance, and she spent the night at the hospital. And then a week in bed. And as expected, everyone accepted the explanation of me protecting my mother. Even my mother thinks I just reacted. But I know it's not the case. I could have used less strength. I could even stop her before she reached my mother. But no. I was so angry that all I wanted was to hurt her. And now, I have the image of her knocked out in my head. Edit. No one except my ex's parents talked harshly to me. Thank you for calling me out. I guess I needed that. Also thank you to those who tried to defend me. It was nice of you but don't hit someone in anger, because when you calm down, it never feels good. That being said, there were some few misconceptions in the comments I would like to correct. Not that it would change anything though. Also, I would like to answer some common questions. First, my ex is okay now. I have seen her from time to time since we live in the same city. You will be glad to know that I'm no longer in relationship and don't plan to ever. This was the first time I hurt someone and it will also be the last. Where I'm from, people don't really believe in therapy. They don't even believe in allergy. So, I haven't tried. But well, it might help. I know I have issues. Yes, my ex did try to cheat. She admitted it herself. It was not just my mother's story. No, I didn't escalate the situation into a fight so I could hit her. I started recording when I was still hiding and listening to them. It is something I learned from Reddit, after a breakup, one party tries to blame the other by spreading lies. So, when I understood what my mother and ex were talking about, I started recording. When I had enough, I went into the living room and told her to leave my house. Yes, my mother was in danger. My ex literally jumped on her. I know 57 is not too old, but she could have been badly hurt. Still, I know I could have restrained my ex instead of hitting her like that. Top comments. Info, you say she got mad at your mom and tried to attack her. Did she actually physically attack your mom? So. Was your mom correct? Was girlfriend going to F someone or had she arranged to buy something from marketplace? Did girlfriend admit she was planning to cheat? Was your mom proud of you for hitting your girlfriend? Have you booked therapy? I am amazed how calculated you were, starting recording and insinuating in their scandal. Thing is, no one wanted to look too close at your act, because if so they would demonstrate that your reaction was disproportionate. I hope you guys like this video if you did make sure like, comment, share and subscribe the channel our posts.